there. I hit record. <laughs> okay, uh, welcome to the July 20th Common Metrics Working Group meeting. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I think uh, we can go ahead and uh, uh, begin our discussion on how metrics and models are selected by the, the Common Working Group. Uh, this relates to the Working Group mission. Uh, and with that, I'll, I'll throw it over to Matt. Okay, so just real briefly, the metro, the common working group is what we've kind of talked about is the working group that's responsible for kind of moving forward metrics, but probably more metrics models that maybe don't fit clearly within the working group or are they originate from some of our context working groups where we're not necessarily asking those context working groups to to kind of do the effort of you know grabbing the template and putting everything in a template form and kind of authoring the metric or metric model and that's um i that's part of the process i say that's all good but i'm not sure that that is good um so historically prior to metrics models each of the working groups would just kind of develop their own metrics which was great and like i was saying before we did the recording here um many working groups still do that which is completely fine um as part of that release so for example dei still does develop their own metrics as part of um, as an example like you know with project badging a couple metrics that need to be developed and they really came from the they were Group. So that still does happen. To me, the biggest challenge is from the context working groups. So those context working groups are the OSPO working group, the corporate OSPO working group, the university OSPO working group, and the scientific working group. And one of the things that we ask these or these context groups, one of the things that we ask these context groups is to not worry too much about the inner workings of the chaos project, that they can just kind of speak freely about things that they would like to see within those context working groups. And I still like that premise. I think sometimes if we get down to the details, we'll lose some of the people who attend those calls and so it'll just become less interesting for some people. Um, and so the idea was, is that as those um, context groups talk openly about metrics models here in the common working group, we would help develop those, that they would kind of roll into this group. And I'm not terribly concerned about like how we identify those that should roll into this group. That seems to be okay. We seem to have enough at the moment overlap of people that attend the different context working groups or the context groups and attend this. The, the communication seems to be pretty good. Uh, my concern is that out of those context working groups, there could be a situation where um, the those context groups just kind of speak openly about metrics models and it becomes like nine or 12 or 15 metrics models and they just kind of roll into here and we're kind of like wow. <laughs> we're also doing other things as well and so anyway that's that's kind of the premise of this and where my concern lies i think we can solve this i just think it's something we need to think about um related related to this i would say the the challenge coming from the models working group is that they may include too many metrics in their models uh, and maybe maybe it's in in those situations it's the case where, where common can give them feedback that says hey maybe maybe instead of eight models you could pare that down to three or four or eight metrics eight metrics you can pare it down to three or four so in, in that way i kind of uh I would kind of see the common working group as kind of being a, a kind of lever for uh, validation and rigor a little bit, right? To just make sure we're we're keeping it simple and not not overcomplicating the, uh, the the models. I agree. This this brief um, in this week's is one of there's a metric model that is really ready to go and it probably has eight metrics um and i just i said exactly what you said like don't we we're trying to keep these kind of small just so they're kind of these incremental first steps um and the response was and it was i thought a good response for this particular metric model like a lot of these metrics say around licensing are just kind of derivations of one metric or some of like the activity are 
they're kind of derivations of things around issues. And so that was at least for that model, a fair argument. And I know we wouldn't just be rigid. Nothing past four, but as long as we're just part of the conversation. So maybe the, so maybe we have the, maybe we have that discussion around each metric or each model that we, that we look at. It's just like, is there, uh, is there, is this, is this trying to be too much? Is this relevant? What are, what are the questions? Like, does someone actually need this metric or are we, or are we kind of creating it just because the, we have the ability to measure it? Yes. I think that's fair. So as long as we're just part of that kind of reflection on the number of metrics that are in the model, I think that's a good idea. And I, but I think that that does define kind of the uh, back and forth with this working group, right? Where we would actually, where we would actually, as a working group, provide feedback to the context working group or the metrics model working group based on uh, based on what we're looking at, I suppose. Yeah. So how? I guess the question then is how? Like, how, what's the best way to do that? Is it just me? And I don't mind if it's me just kind of chiming in during the OSPO working group and just saying, hey, we have brought this to context and you know, what's that so far? You know, if you have feedback right now, maybe take five minutes and take a look at it as a group, <laughs> we could bring it back. So is it just a liaison, like a you know how we had that liaison concept a while ago? Well, not, not a while ago. That's that's defined as in our governance document that, that well, position exists. All right. <laughs> you can <still> use it then. <laughs> I think when we when we initially talked about that liaison, I think that was kind of the that was act, that was actually part of the why we were talking about it, right? To the the, the liaison person would be that that person who would uh, kind of connect from the working group to the context group uh, and be that point of contact to bring the metric into the working group and maybe to uh, provide feedback back to the like return it context back. group, right? Yeah. So what if we kind of tried to reinvigorate that role and mm -hmm. like put an open call out? Like if somebody would like to participate in, it would, it would be two calls then. Like there would be this group and then the, the respective context group that they would be the liaison for. And I know- Could, Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I. There seem to be a number of people who have an interest in finding different ways to participate and contribute to the project. Maybe if we did an open call for this, uh, we might get some people with an, an interest. We could also treat it as a uh, uh, almost an action item or task-based role, where you could be the liaison for this metric or for this model or for uh, so and just assign it by whoever wants to whoever wants to be the point of contact for it. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I have a question? Sorry. I, I was just wondering if um so I, I you mentioned the template and there's it's clear the metrics are templated. Yep. Um but I'm wondering, is there documentation elsewhere about this? Or, sorry, the models. I meant to say the models. I do that constantly. Um, <laughs> um, uh, if, if there's, so just because when I look at them, so there's some models where there's a there's like a, a great deal of narrative about like, we investigated this in this way. This is how we validated it. And then there are others where there's like a tiny paragraph of like, we think this is what this model means. And then, you know, the list of, um, and I guess like, especially if you're talking about like um, trying to get more people involved, it seems like you might need more guidance for people as to like what a good write-up looks like. And I, and I guess I also wondered a little bit if, you know, if, if you're not throwing in eight metrics or trying to keep it small, that might also give you more room to talk a little bit more about why those metrics or in the cases where you, like we were talking about the the this whole thing where you're trying to figure out the contributor attribution and how hard that is and so you might have three metrics because you're saying this is what you're trying to get to it's really hard here's three possible avenues so all the metrics are listed but there's like just a bit more context of why 
this particular thing is hard or complicated or the kind of decision making you might need to make around it. So let me, um, I'll respond to that. So you are correct that there are some metric models that are pretty short and they're basically like why it matters, the user story and the metrics, the proposed metrics in the model. That's the end of that model, <laughs> full stop. Um, and then there are other models that have, they have that and then they have a whole section below, which is to your point, which is more about implementation details. Um, for you, Jen, is there one of the more useful for you or like that you look at and you're like, I can understand this? Um, that's hard to say. Okay. I, I, I think that the question that I keep coming back to for these groups in general is like the audience of like who you're trying to talk to in different places and whether like you're looking at some, something about the models sort of presents itself potentially as like, here's like a solution-y sort of thing. And so it seems like it might make sense to have more information there, okay. but obviously you can also go read the metrics. Um, so I guess I'm not, it's not, I, I, maybe I'm not sure whether one is totally, I do appreciate the idea of validation and like where that is coming in, especially if you're like just generating lots and lots of metrics like that. Um, so I guess I don't feel like there's one right answer, just that um, the, the inconsistency sort of makes you kind of wonder about the right way to do it. We um, early on, Kevin, you'll remember this, our metrics, used to have an implementation section <laughs> and it was like fairly detailed implementation, like sometimes down even to the SQL statement that could be used to pull the data. And we ended up removing that from the metrics just because, I mean, it could be implemented in a number of different ways and our SQL statements would get old and <laughs> the data was old, Kevin. You, I'm sure you remember yeah, that. Yeah, it was a very, it was very specific context that would, uh, yeah, the. Uh, that totally makes sense. We also, uh, uh, at, at one point, we were also creating uh, the uh, the notebooks for metrics as well. Uh, which we we moved away from that, and uh, and now we're 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 actually doing that again now however the the process has kind of changed so i think the i think the way we're doing it now is more generalized we're trying to create a useful tool for people uh, whereas the the previous method was was maybe more context specific yeah that makes sense and i i mean i could say that also for me like for some of these it's not that it's that the metric is telling you the question to ask more than that you care about the specific implementation. I 100% agree. And based on this conversation, I mean, my inclination for the models is to actually remove the implementation and say, here's the, here's the model. It's when you talk about audience, Jen, it's like you're an OSPO manager at a university or you're part of a scientific software community, whatever it might be, but this is meant to prompt thinking and how to approach a particular problem that you're having. And then the ways that it gets implemented could be found to your point in the metrics themselves, because we do talk a little bit about how to, to do that in the metrics themselves. And gosh, I mean, there are so many different tools and approaches that people take that here's the starter like it helps you move out of the gate that's my inclination yeah so I, yeah uh so so i do i do like that the that, that group is putting together tooling to look at the the models uh, but i but i would agree i would agree with matt i think those the model and the tooling should be uh separate uh and maybe we we link to the tooling that we create in the model but uh, ideally, those would be separate, and uh, and maybe to Jen's point, these models do do need a little more information in them. So maybe we need to kind of squeeze a bit more <laughs> from that group when we're writing up those models. You remember, in early stages of the metrics models, we actually had more detail on the metric. 
like why we included the metric to your point, Jen, and then we took it out. <laughs> and maybe that's something that we need to bring in. Back um, and then I'll, one last comment too on the implementation, at least with the metric. When we were doing metrics implementations, we found the the metric itself has some stable narrative to it. Like there's a story about the question that it was approaching, or you know the why you care about this metric. Same with metric models. We would always run into these issues where, like maintaining that implementation part of the metric, was pretty impossible. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, it's it's like. I don't know. It just, it, it moved a little bit. It would change over the years and we couldn't really keep up with managing that part of the metric. So that's why we removed it too, I think. I feel like also we've talked about, I don't know if this is relevant, but we've talked about in the past for the ones that Compass has validated, linking to that validation or to their reports and to their information, because they will put in like all everything you know on their documentation side and i feel like we had talked about linking those two did i dream that um yeah you dreamt it <laughs> you know you did we did actually say that <laughs> but i don't know if we've done it i don't i don't think we've actually done that yet so so are, are we still are we still having a uh a public period for comments on metrics when we release them is that part of the release process currently? Not really. Okay. I think our rationale there was that um, we would take comments anytime. And so mm -hmm. we put them out there. And also like this discussion of creation is also public. So there was enough time for folks to really weigh in and look. Mm -hmm. and, and like after the fact, like if somebody had a comment on a metric we released three years ago, we would still resurface that like we would entertain their comments and it's not like oh nope sorry you missed the cut off you missed the cut off you too late so yeah i think that was part of the rationale is that right matt i recall it was just uh i was contemplating if uh if if for example the the common working group could be a mechanism for review of models before they're released or something along those lines That's a good uh, one. And then, and then that got me thinking, well, what would that, if we're doing that for models, maybe we should contemplate doing something like that for metrics too. So what would that look like for metrics? Uh, and maybe that's the, the review would be the uh, push it back to the context group that uh, proposed it to review it or the, uh, in the case of uh, uh, DEI or risk, uh, they could either self-review or request come and take a look at it. It's just a just a just a step right before we yep. right before we release release it. Right, it's just so, something as simple as hey, in your next meeting, can you review this this metric or model? I'm going to share my screen a little bit fast here. I'm just going to, based on the discussion, it seems like based on what you were talking about, we seem like we have a couple really good ideas. Um, one is to uh, say one, uh, discuss the EIS, discuss the removal of the implementation in metrics. Um, and would we, so if we're removing the implementation, would we have a section in that model that would be basically tools that provide this where we could still link to? Exactly. I was just going to say and point to, to okay. tools that provide this metric model. It's similar to what we do metrics. So like if Compass has done a deployment, which is where a lot of the implementation stuff had come from. So I, we could open that discussion to other people, maybe even like in the community meeting, Elizabeth, you know, just to say this is one of the things, and we can obviously talk about it in the metrics model meeting. Um, and the reason is, is right now there, reasons why there is, is inconsistencies. 
see between different metrics models um, implementation in um, like uh, not really codified, but like in in. I don't, I hate to um, suggest yet another group, but I feel like implementation is the thing that our users struggle the most with. Yes. And so perhaps we need a group focused on education, um, just having a central place for those kind of discussions to happen so that we're not just like, forgetting it all together and <laughs> just be like, eh, sorry, you're on your own. But we have a group that's focused on kind of keeping up with tools and helping that, helping facilitate that piece of it. Um, Because I, you know, in, you know, at FOSSI, just for as an example, I got several questions about how to implement the data and implement the metrics, not so much even like what metrics should we be looking at? It was how do I, how do I do this in a real way? And how do I make a dashboard essentially? Like, how do I just do it? So I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I actually, for Don. Uh, we, keep, <laughs> we keep giving Don more Elizabeth, work. Yeah. Elizabeth, I think we had this discussion some time ago and we, dis we discussed that it's not really within the, the scope of kiosk to implement the metrics because each community will need some certain degree of uh, structural organization that we don't capture in our definition of metrics. We have a high level overview of how they are, which is quite good. But on the line data structure, even like when we were discussing about the communication with Sean, he told us that Ago and uh, I think other things don't have that structure to capture. If we really go on implementation, trust me, we will need to redefine a lot of things and try making a kind of template and a kind of middleware, which is really outside. That will really be more on software engineering kind of work. We can guide people if they need some help, but taking it as a major task to discuss will really be a lot of activities that are not really building some higher level of complexity on the metrics themselves. I think that's fair, 100% fair. Um, it just feels like a shame to leave such a gap un, unattended, um, you know, because I think our ultimate goal is to improve community health, to help people improve yeah. community health. And so by, you know, just leaving that as a gap and not addressing it at all, I, I feel like that, I mean, I totally understand what you're saying, Armstrong, and I do agree. I do agree that it's, it's like a, a huge, it would be a huge evolutionary step, I think, in chaos to kind of take that piece on to the level that it needs to be taken on. But I don't know, maybe maybe for the future, you know, maybe when Dawn starts her work that that will present themselves present itself a little easier. I don't know. Go ahead, Kev. Yeah, so I, I agree that in the in the past we have taken that stance. But I, I do think that uh we are starting to kind of transition into a more active uh, active role on the implementation side. So we're, I think we're, we're moving to a place where we want to maybe start to be able to predict outcomes based on these metrics. We want to see how these metrics are, are working for organizations or for people in contexts uh, so while, while I agree in the past that we have kind of taken a, a hands-off approach to that, I think at the, at the place we're at in the project now, uh, I think we are, I think we are interested in, in kind of taking it to the next step, uh, and, and really looking and seeing what these metrics look like in the real world. Uh, and I think the, to the, to your point, I think Dawn is probably the uh, the first point of contact for this going forward, but I would also say that the uh, 
the, the education platform that we were talking about the other day in uh, DEI is a, is a good place to maybe begin outreach around this as well. I think this is all fair. I do know that one of the things seems seems related to this that Don has talked about in her role as the director of data science is kind of first just trying to answer the questions for people as to when Augur is the right tool to use and when Grimoire Lab is the right tool to use and why, you know, just kind of the why. And I, to me, that seems like a really good entry <laughs> into this. Mm -hmm. Okay, for that reason, I think I'm okay with uh, with the approach that Kevin also mentioned. Yeah. I just want to add that in that case, they need to add uh, a layer of responsibility to Don because data science alone is not addressing this kind of problem. They need data engineering. These are two different concepts. Agreed. I mean, I yeah. think this will be unpacked over the course of the next three years. I'm always really careful to not <laughs> add things to Don's list. I mean, but, yeah, not necessarily Don, but I mean, you can delegate or they can, uh, you know, make something really like clear structure upfront. Yep. Because this is what we call technical debt. We allow certain problems to triple in. Then later on, we start looking for measures how to fix it. And yeah. technical debt, in, we know it's very costly in any system to repair than thinking it from requirement upfront. So it's better we reflect on the process upfront before we start. Agreed. And kind of like yeah. kind of like with the work we do in badging, like we're just a lot of the work that we had done. I know it's a little bit different context, but a lot of the work that we have done is on the process and the expectation setting and what we believe this can say, you know, the, those those different badging processes. So I think to your point, Armstrong, like we would need to do those things as well here. Like how far, what's the story that we can tell and how far out can we tell it? And, you know, where do we lose insight? Yeah. All right. Um, does this reason does this look reasonable, like a reasonable list to everybody? And Matt, just to clarify, you want to bring all, all four of these topics up in community meeting or? Yeah, it'd just be nice to circulate these. Sure. Yeah, and I think, I don't think any are going to come as a huge surprise. It's just from a clarity perspective for everybody. Kevin, does this list look good to you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, to, uh, I think the, uh, Part of the uh, where we talk about uh, kind of reviewing new metrics and new metrics models, adding that kind of adding that task to common. That I think that would be a good task for common, and I think that's directly related to the uh, the comments that that Jen made about maybe con consistency around the models yep. and even the metrics, uh, and then and taking it a step further, uh, kind of the the rigor and validity around those as well. So if we were uh, if we were to take on that task, I think we do have to we have to have a conversation about what those uh, what that review would look like, right? The, and one of the one of the first questions I would have is is whether we even need this metric, right? Is this metric going to be useful for someone? Uh, so I, I think that's I think that would be. Uh, that might be even fair to take back to the uh, uh, the working groups, the EI and risk working groups, and, and even the context groups. Right? Are we just are we just creating this this metric because we have the ability to measure it, or are we defining this metric because someone needs it and it will tell them something useful about their project? Uh, and I think in the in the past maybe we've taken on some metrics that maybe weren't maybe weren't needed or aren't being used by people for sure about that i agree with that okay i got that down as well kind of just what would this process look like and how do we express those concerns back to the groups like all that kind of stuff that's all fair 
Yeah. Maybe without offending them, because I, I would imagine what I just said, if we gave them that feedback, that would probably be, uh, that might make them mad. Well, maybe, the liaison, maybe this is part of what the liaison does, you know, is coming from that discussion. There was one metric that was called into question and whether or not it's really needed. So, okay, cool. Thank you. Or inter you asked for one thing on the agenda that wasn't on the agenda, and that was the one thing. And now we're already, we have 15 minutes left. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, the agenda is pretty full, uh, but Vinod is not here. And a couple of these are Vinod issues. Uh, uh, and Dawn is not here either. Uh, yeah. And a couple of them are Dawn issues. Uh, we could look at the change request closure. I'm sorry. Uh, self merge rate. So, self merge rate was the uh, the metric that uh, uh, Ray. So Ray was working on this. Ray, yeah, Ray, Ray put forward. Uh, so he's on vacation now. Okay. Uh, so. I'm not sure when he'll be back, but I think he has finished his uh, basically initial run through of it. Uh, I don't believe we've looked at this as a group yet. I don't think we have either, you know, like in this finished form. Mm -hmm. you want to take so a should we take a, take a few minutes and, and edit it slash provide feedback as a group? Give it Five minutes would give it a quick, quick read. Uh, whoever has the highlighted question, uh, thinking back to when we were discussing this, this metric is two separate questions, yes. Uh, so it's, it's looking at them uh, together and separately, or together and or separately. Yes, yeah, exactly.
Can you see this sort of stuff through the GitHub interface? You can, can't you? What's that? Can you see these two things through the GitHub interface? Because yes. it talks about tools providing the metric. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a, a, a good point. The uh, a lot of the a lot of the metrics we define. The the number one tool providing the metric is GitHub, <laughs> uh, which I don't think we or GitLab. Yeah, uh, and we we haven't uh, we don't necessarily include those. What other types of review that are non-bot exist? So I agree, you could do a text-based comment. You could provide an emoji. What else? What's the et cetera? There's a platform review like um you know, I'm talking about like an assigned review, but that's still only going to be an emoji or a text based comments. Uh, are be... emojis are emojis really? Uh, I'm talking like a like a comment that says, "Let's get this merged." Is that a is that a review? Is that a, a type of review? That's, I'm guessing that's this. Okay. An emoji would be a thumbs up on it. And then, yeah. there, you know, the, signed review. Yeah. That's this, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, review approval. So these don't really show us this metric. Uh, there's a check box in that first one. There's a little green check mark, which shows that those two people have reviewed it. But it doesn't show us the rates at which a community. No, it's just observational, but you could, if the, if the question is, how many contributions to the project were being merged by the original contributor uh, and or uh, without a review, uh, I mean, we would be able, using this interface in some projects, we would be able to do a count, right? So we would be able to identify the, we would be able to identify that number uh, observationally by doing a count. I mean, I agree you could do it from yeah. this, but. I'm just saying these pictures are not showing yeah. that. That's fair. So um, quick question, how do we handle the auto merge uh, functionality from GitHub? Because people have reached those requirements. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like it's not a review, but it's not a self merge necessarily because they would have to have re reached some requirements. Do you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, does that play into here? Do we care? I think maybe that's a question for Ray. Okay. What was the question? So, like, you can set up auto merge in your repository as long as PR meets some sort of requirements, some criteria. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it might be a self merge, but it has already passed the threshold for that. So it's not a full review, but it's not just a random merge, if that makes sense. So I did, it's like a gray fuzzy area. 
what does the is it a bot that does the auto merge uh, i think it's a um, it is a um it's sign. just a rule isn't it it's a is rule it? you can assign for a certain type of uh a level of uh yeah it's like i've never used it um my guess is that that would fall more in the bot category. Okay. Some automated. It does seem like it would be bad practice still, even if uh, even if that is a trusted uh, contributor. <laughs> risky <laughs> like I, right. I, I don't know I, that's why i've never used it anymore like even just for simple things it seems risky i mean at it least does, with the with the, oh go ahead sorry no sorry i should say it does make me wonder about like if part of the confusion is the mixing together of the merging and the reviewing like it, if it should just be a question about whether things are being reviewed Right, because because part of what's going on in like the scenario that you're talking about is they've set a standard, you get three reviews and then it can merge and it can be like somebody does it or you say, hey, GitHub after three reviews, merge it. And like those kind of seem, I mean, it seems slightly scary to me, but potentially of equal quality. And it's more like the review process is the concern than the actual merge action. Right, because sometimes Sometimes you'll get a review that'll say, you know, let's get this merged, uh, and then the, but they won't merge it. So the like, okay, well, I guess I'll merge it myself then, since they're uh, since they've told me to, right? So the so the the key point here is about the lack of review, a lack of review leading to a merge. I just want to flag the time, but I think that's an excellent question, Jen. Or comment, I should say. I think maybe that's a another distinction we should maybe take back to to Ray to discuss. Uh, it made me think that maybe this should be two metrics that we have self merge. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. Yeah, and then. And Something about the review process, like just. A I would even. Uh, crappy. Review. I'm not even sure it needs to be two metrics. Maybe it's just like going back to what we were talking about earlier. Like, do we need to? Do we need a self merge metric, and a merge without review metric? Uh, is is self merge a useful metric if we take out the review bit, or is it only useful when review is included? If it's only useful when review is included, then it's probably just one. It's just one metric is what we're looking at, and that's merge without review. Yeah. Uh, but but let's maybe we should ask Ray. Thank you. I do you have a uh, change request review metric already? Like it, we just asked, to what extent does the review does a, a merge request go through a review? So maybe that's lumped into that i don't know anyway yeah where it would be a would it be a filter for that uh or not maybe not a filter but a uh what's the other what's the other term we use I don't know. i'll drop this in the minutes though i'm also putting it in the metric itself or the web metric well thank you all for coming uh we'll see you again in two weeks uh it will will don be back from vacation by then or i believe so yes okay and i'm assuming I think Ray may be back. I saw the dates for Ray's. I think he may be back as well. Uh, so uh, I will. Uh, I think he had made a comment in Slack. So I will. Uh, I will reach out to him. 
and let him know we we reviewed it and uh, hopefully he can join us next meeting to discuss it. All right. Awesome. Thank you all. See y'all later. Bye.